part of the Press Play Podcast Network. <laughs> We're back. We are. More content, more sports hobby news. This is the Ball Card Show, the sports podcast. For the sports collector. My name is Jason Otero. I'm Gary Lamaster. And as always, we are brought to you by Fresh Off of a new renewal for another year. No, I was going to say Oh, I was press. Saying, that was a celebratory. Okay, pop your tops. Pop the top, yeah. As always, we're part of the Press Play Podcast Network. If you like sports, if you like hobbies, if you have general interests, if you enjoy the things that you like. If you like <laughs> words that start with P. Press Play Podcast Network. This is going to go for a while, isn't it? I was thinking of so many things that I could say when you say words that start with P, and then I realized I probably shouldn't say any of them because whenever we start in the first minute off the wrong foot, I'm so nervous for what's coming out of your mouth next. So I just felt like you were starting to go somewhere. You had no idea where you're going. You're just digging it, and then you just like froze like, how do I get out of this? You threw me off with your- Pop in the top? No, but it was good. Okay. Yeah. Luke Combs has a song that starts- like a beer can, right? And yeah. you just hear that, and it's like such a satisfying sound. It is. It Not as be, satisfying as this drink I'm about to Right, take, and it can be Coca-Cola, right? I was at a job no, today. No, it can't. No, I got to tell you. Shut up. <laughs> you shut your mouth. You shut your mouth when you're talking to me. I was at a job today. It's very hot today. Very muggy in central Ohio. It was, it was like, definitely moist. Like 87 and... Like 38% humidity. Yeah. You just... Walking there was a soup. breeze. It was actually cooler walking because there's you a have to wear breeze. jeans in this. You were yeah. just baking steak yeah. all day. So I get halfway in the call. I go inside. I'm getting ready to present options to sell. And when you're a big guy and you move around in the heat, the sweat outside is not what gets you. It's when you sit down. <laughs> it just starts pouring off of me. And this sweet old lady was like, honey, we have craft root beers and ginger ales. And I was like screw water sign me up she put that on ice baby i don't know what kind it was some sioux city fall whatever and i was like yes notice yes. that you did not say she gave you a coca-cola no because that is a trash ass drink i would confidently stand in disagreement with you on that oh, coca-cola a, is the best cola i'm a pepsi man yeah well i don't know how to say this so i'm just <laughs> yeah gonna put you it do out there. I'll just put it like this. I think this is a good way to say it. I knew a lot of Pepsi drinkers growing up. Most of them drove, uh, smoked uh, Pall Mall cigarettes. Well, also, a good use of their budget was scratch-offs. Okay. I'm going to go a step further. Just on average, hygiene, not... I just think Coca-Cola is just kind of a premier product. No, I I can judge so so okay. If you're under the age of seventy and prefer RC Cola, what do you think of that person? I think they like what they like, and RC Cola is still probably better than Coke. Sorry, it's just how I feel. And if you all really, right, right, if you right, want right. to get if you want to get crazy with this, if you're only comparing colas, the actual cola. I won't fight you if you say you like Coke, but the entire family of products. Pepsi just annihilates everybody. So Would you rather have Mount, Mountain Dew or Mellow Yellow? Mountain Dew. A hundred times out of a hundred. How about Dr. Pepper versus whatever the Mr. Hell? Pibb? Yeah. Dr. Pepper. Yeah. That's Coca-Cola, you idiot. Okay, sorry. Keep going. No, Sprite I don't, don't want to play Mist. this game anymore. Oh, no. It's not even Sierra Mist Starry. anymore. Starry. Yes, exactly. And it's actually better. Uh, no, Sprite wins that one. But I would rather have 7-Up uh, than either. So, What's Canada Dry Ginger Ale? Is that A&W? Is that in the RC family? I don't know. Come on, ginger you're fat. Ale, you know this. Come on. Ginger ale straight is kind of a weird drink. Yeah. Like, if I've got an upset tummy, I guess I'll drink some ginger ale straight, but it's usually only good as a mixer. You know what we grew up on? <laughs> Crushed dreams and sadness. Whatever. <laughs> a quarter could buy you at that Walmart <laughs> pop machine. I think it was called Mountain Thunder or Mountain... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you're 100% right. Dr. Thunder. Yeah, Dr. Thunder, uh, Mountain Lightning. Dude, bring back the quarter pops. You know what? Bring them back. Why? Just because... All right, sure, these other ones taste better, but for a quarter? <laughs> I'm happy for a quarter. <laughs> 
I'd be content with 50 cent pops. Yeah. Um, let's keep this going. Favorite specialty soft drink. Ooh. I know what you're going to say. What am I going to say? So, you're going to say in Chillicothe, there used to be a place that would do a chocolate Coke. Oh, I thought you meant like a pre-bottled thing. No, like you go somewhere. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not used to be. It's some burger. I thought they closed. They only closed the Bridge Street location. They still have the Western Avenue We're location. so fat. Guys, we're talking about <laughs> a Greasy Spoon Diner an hour at least away from so, it. But some burger is like has a big national following. That's like, a lie. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Not at all. Some burger is amazing. Um, but yeah, they make a chocolate Pepsi and it's the best thing ever. Disgusting. I tried Wrong. It. I tried it. I like the burgers there. What do they put on it? Something sweet on there. The sun burger sauce. Sun it's burger basically sauce. Thousand Island dressing. Yeah. But it's really good. Uh, they have the best fried mushrooms. I'm not going to sell ever. this as well as you, uh, but it's hard to beat 44 ounces of a cherry limeade. So, I mean, Sonic has its thing. I, I'm with you there. I don't hate cherry limeade at all. It's really good. The cherry limeade slushy is a better route when it's real freaking hot At some hot point out. when we're changing the chemical state of water i think that's where we've breached the contract of soft drink of humanity it's a semi-soft drink <laughs> and intro <That's>, out. Uh, <laughs> i want to say it so bad <laughs> but i can't um so yeah well that's uh, how we feel about soft drinks uh press play podcast network where you'll find <laughs> our contact bees. but let's jump in hey first off we're gonna we're gonna solicit ourselves well, and first off, thanks for sticking with us through that just complete cluster of an intro. It was fun, though. Oh, we lost them. Yeah. This is day two. They decided <laughs> to turn it back on to see if it got better. They went over to Sports Cards Nonsense to see what was going on. <laughs> Guarantee it. Oh, shit. Uh, Mike okay. Geo is still mad, and Jesse's still frustrated that Mike interrupts him the whole time. Absolutely. Uh, but, uh, hey, we're back, and we're going to jump into Sports Cards. Before we do that, shameless plug. Yeah, we don't do this enough because we, we don't want to be those guys, but we need your help. Yeah, we need you to hop on Spotify or Apple Music, wherever you listen, and leave us a review. Yeah, and, and if you haven't hit the subscribe button, the subscribe button helps us a ton. Even if you never listen to another one of our podcasts again after this, if you just keep us subscribed, oh, man, that's that kinda, helps us out. It's true, but it sounds bad when you say it out loud. It does sound bad when you say it like that, but it's still the truth. It helps us out a ton. We don't ask you guys for this. This might be the second time ever we've done this in three years. Yeah. But uh, it helps us a ton. And when we're, you, we're getting a lot of momentum. We're gaining a lot of listenership, and you guys are to thank for that. So tell a friend and subscribe and leave us a review. It's been really fun. It shows meeting a lot of you, getting to know your stories, finding out who yeah. you like. Um, we appreciate hanging out with you. That's always good. Uh, you want to jump into pickups in the last week? Because I've got a story. Yeah, you go first. I've picked up quite a few things this week, too. All right, so I didn't buy a lot. Okay. But at the last card show we had, there's a gentleman. <laughs> once a month, he comes to the same Safe to show. say he's not listening. I don't know. Um, he's always at the show. Um, I believe the show is a highlight for him. Um <sighs> I mean, you started the story. She might as well just dump, know, jump in okay. with both feet. The impression I get is that he doesn't live in the a in a house. In a house, yeah. Um, however, he carries this trench coat, and he always shows up to the card show, and he always has cards to trade. Yes, and I think it's awesome. And he loves to just sit at your table, destroy your box, mix up all the cards. But he actually he's built. He's trying to build friendships. Yeah, Let's and, just and call it what fair. it is. He also has the worst takes ever on sports. Yeah. <laughs> He, he just says the dumbest shit, and you just look yeah. at him, and you go, what? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, it'd Sorry. be like, uh, you think Pedro Martinez will come back and pitch? Yeah, exactly. It's like that kind of like stuff. that, yes. Uh, but uh, so this, he's a huge Bears fan. I've known that. And his favorite thing to do is build a big stack of Bears. Like, he'll go through my cards and set all my Justin Fields, any cool or lacquer stuff. Yeah. He sets it off to the side, and he's like, hey, set that off to the side for me. And he never comes back, and then nobody gets to buy those. And so last time I was like, man, I can't keep just setting these off to the side. If you know, if you want to purchase them, that's one thing. But he's like, well, what do you want to trade for? And he'll go around with a couple one dollar cards and try to trade them two and three and ask me if I want this or that and sell it. And I think it's pretty cool. Um, and then this last time he came up and he had a stack 
And he had a little more swagger and confidence with him as he was looking through. <laughs> he found some cool. There's like a cool, I think it's like hot sauce or hot something, like flame die cut or lacquer card out there from the late 90s. Okay. Uh, Justin Fields, Panini Black, rookie, and something else. Nothing crazy. Um, and he's like, what do you want to trade for? What do you want to trade for? And he had a couple dollar cards. For me, I know this is a big deal for him. Like, he loves the card show. He had a couple, like, Topps Chrome Mickey Mantle inserts, which I don't mind trading a buck for a buck if I really think it'll sell. Those will right. sell. Yep. Pick anything out of there you want. He's like, well, I do have this card, and I'd really like uh, a couple of these Bears cards I've looked at for a while. And he pulls out an on-card auto of Will Clark, Topps Bazooka. Now, the condition is somebody has carried this in their Beat trench coat. Hell. yeah. Uh, I've seen worse come out of uh, sleeves. Um, I've seen worse in top letters actually when, when I pulled him out of there, but um, yeah, it's it's a little beat, but it was an on card auto of Will Clark. I was like, yeah, and Will Clark doesn't sign much. No, it was a cool card. It's a top 60th whatever, but it's a bazooka. So it's like a yeah, a more short printed. Auto. Whatever. Yeah, it's probably twenty thirty bucks, whatever. Well, then he like starts grabbing a few more cards, and they end up in his coat without him asking if he could take them. I was like, well, what's going on there? He's like. All right, I got this Tory Holt auto for you. So he's just pulling on card autos out of everywhere. <laughs> um, but it was cool to see him like enjoy that. Um, I don't see a ton of Will Clark stuff out there. No. I've always liked it. Um, so that was a Still fun one of the sweetest swings you'll ever see. Yeah. I also did great on a pool hole slot. Yes, you did. Oh my goodness! So this there's I'm a glad guy you had there a good that, buying show. Yeah, I had a very good buy. I had a terrible selling show. <laughs> it was a show where I had people at my table, one and two deep, all show, two yeah. in, in, in chairs. Well, digging. You told me what you did. I was mm-hmm. blown away because I the yep. whole day you had people yep. at your table, which you, you probably have more people at your table yes. than I did at mine. Yes. So I did terrible on selling. People were building stacks, but they started over by me, and then that's the risk if you do. So I have a sizable fifty cent lot now good amount of one one dollar stuff like tables starting to fill up as i build up my inventory so people were staying there for you know 5 10 15 minutes building a big stack and then going through and being like oh, you could tell they had a 15 dollar budget for the week or whatever yeah. so it wasn't great for that but uh this guy had player lots and he had a pool hole slot in the old school like plastic yeah containers that'll hold like 50 the cards snap container yeah and it looked kind of like oh man these are like some second third year stuff so I grabbed it. It's got like a second year gold medallion, poo holes, three of the Fleer rookies. Yeah. Um, I, I, I did very well on that lot. Uh-huh. Uh, a bunch of Jordan inserts, like the uh, Z4 stuff. Stuff oh, so a buck, yeah, two, three Well, bucks. you bought one set that was like five pages of the same Jordan yeah. insert, but they're all ones that sell for 50 cents to a buck a piece yep. all day long, yep. if not a couple bucks. Yep, yep. Some of them are two, three bucks. But anyway, so I did really well on some low-end pickups. Nothing crazy exciting, but honestly, that the fact that I knew this guy's been picking this card out for a while... That's kind of cool. He loves cards so much with a lot of the other stresses that he's dealing with that a lot of people aren't. It made his day. It made my day. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was really cool. Yeah. But yeah, he does have some some really random takes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, what did you pick up? Um, so we started at the beginning of the week. So we were set up at the same show. Um, like I said, it was weird because I felt like you had people at your table more than I did at mine. And they were pulling more stuff out of your boxes than they were mine. But I had a really good selling show yeah. uh, to the point where I was kind of panicking because I've got another show this weekend. And I was like, I need to refill some stuff. Um, so Sunday, uh, after our show on Saturday, Sunday, I was looking to see what shows were reasonably close. The closest one was a show I go to in Cincinnati every couple of months. It's about an hour and a half. And I drove down there and uh, I picked up probably 350 400 bucks worth of inventory for mm-hmm. 140 bucks there was a wander triple threads numbered to nine rookie a wander franco rookie i got for a steal and then there's one guy uh who i always buy from he has the best baseball dollar boxes outside of my stuff that i've ever seen mm-hmm and I probably and when I buy a hundred, I love that you cards qualified from it. it. Yeah, 100%. can he not just be equally as good as you? No, are? okay. No, that's not how that works. Okay. Um, but I, I usually buy a hundred, hundred fifty cards from him, and he always liked. This time he sold them to me for fifty cents a piece, mm-hmm. and then he had a bunch of three, four, five, eight, ten dollar cards for fifty percent off, and he was underpriced. I bought like five or six Junior Caminero Mojos, and I averaged two bucks a piece on mm-hmm. their fifteen dollar cards. Yeah. 
Uh, so that was really good. And then throughout the week, there have been some really big steals I've had on Facebook. I bought a – I always like to have at least one Ken Griffey Jr. auto in my cases. They always sell, and they're hard to get at a price point. That and it's going to draw sense. attention to your table. Yes. Yeah. Well, I bought a – and it's a leaf, but it's numbered to like 15, 12 or 15, mm-hmm. and it's a Ken Griffey Jr. Randy Johnson dual auto. Um, and it's a red, and it's in the reds uni mm-hmm. with the, the non – you know what I mean? Yeah. The, 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 the non-licensed version of a reds uni. Uh, I picked that up. Um, comps on it are two to two twenty five, and I think I paid one forty for it. Uh, and then I bought today a Wander Franco Gold Bowman Chrome rookie uh, to fifty from the, the National. Um, and Wander, I sold a, a Wander to fifty last week for two thirty, and I got this one for a hundred bucks. Uh, that Wander to seventy five still hasn't moved for me because it's out of. Uh what was that gallery the blue foil to 75 yeah gallery is just a tough yeah. product you got to find the right buyer for it or you have to price aggressively um, it's pretty cheap <laughs> yeah it, it just i mean it's kind of one of those is what it is things yeah. but um so i mean i've picked up a decent amount of that type of stuff i just bought all i've been i've talked about this all the time if you're getting into case breaks of bowman just go find somebody that's selling the paper spot i just picked up the all the paper from a uh, break of 2022 Bowman and 2022 Bowman Draft Super Jumbos for 75 bucks. Nice. That's Ellie. That's Jackson Holiday. Probably get three or four Ellie papers, three or four Jackson Holiday papers, and quite a few other guys that yep. have some uptick. Like Jackson Churio papers. Any PC stuff? Huh, PC stuff this week. Oh, I did get that Ramirez at the show last week. Mm-hmm. It's not technically PC, but it is PC. Well, what number are you throwing on? Uh, PC uh, numbers? Uh, yeah, yeah. I I put uh, it's up for double comps. Yeah. Uh, however, there's only one comp. It's a Jose Ramirez Tops Finest Refractor Rookie Auto PSA nine. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's one of those cards that if I wanted to coin flip, I could crack it, and there's a chance it tens if I resub it. Yep. Uh, beautiful card. And the guy brilliant. who brought it to the table is another dealer who sets up a lot of shows, a guy I've gotten to know. And it was funny because he shows it to me, and I was like, oh, what do you want for that? And he gives me a number, and I'm like, okay, I'll take it. And then he's and like, then he's oh, like wait, 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 wait a minute. I don't know. And I was full comps. Like, he yeah. was at full comps. I was willing to pay full comps Beautiful for it. Beautiful card. Yeah. It's just, it's awesome. And uh, and then he was hemming and hawing, and he was looking at a couple other things. I was like, I'll give you a 225 in trade value. Mm-hmm. Like, he ended up just taking my cash. But it was hilarious because I was like, he was like, yeah, I think I'll like 185 for it. I was like, okay, I'll take he's it. Used for you be- he's used to yeah. beating him up a little bit. <laughs> and first, he was so. like, wait a minute. I don't know if I want to sell it now. That's funny. Uh, all right. Well, once you've reviewed our podcast, now that you're back, thank you for that. <laughs> I'm sure you left this uh, podcast to go do that. Let's talk about a call up that I've been calling way longer than you have. CES is up for the Reds. Yeah, first major league hit was an upper deck, no doubter. Just I was just trying to steal your thunder. Smoked there. it. Yeah. I know you weren't. I just think well, but it. in fairness, everybody was like, "Why is he not already yeah. called up?" <laughs> yeah. So, I saw Ellie at short last night. Yeah, they gave McLean a night off. Yeah. So he had a sick play. <laughs> yeah, because he's an athletic. <laughs> right? freak yeah, he's show. just a freak show. Uh, so, what does the CES dynamic do to that lineup? So I think the CES dynamic is Spencer Steer will start bouncing around between left field, third, and first. Mm -hmm. He had been kind of relegated to first left field since Ellie was at third. But when they give Ellie a day off, he'll play third. Um, CES will go back and forth between first and DH, uh, and he and Votto will Mm -hmm. just play the splits. Do you realize how deep this lineup is getting? Yeah. And and that's not counting – You've still got three or four legit guys between Triple A and Double yeah. A. Yeah. Um, Matthew Nelson. Don't forget is about Cam. Along. Yeah. Well, Cam's still at Low A. There's, yeah. I mean, there's it's a long ways away yet, but yeah. If he 
picks up the trajectory half these other guys have. Yeah. He'd be there pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> Something's going right in that farm system. We're excited about it, but you, you had mentioned that last last couple episodes. Man, it's just where well, there's just one little thing that has to happen and he's up. Yeah. So. And and he's he's making an impact already. Um he's three games in, batting three fifty. He's got four or five RBIs already. He's got a jack, a couple of doubles. Like the dude Whatever hits. they're doing to prepare guys to come up, it's not common for them to come up and be that hot. Like out of the gate. No. Well, like, I mean, a perfect example of that, like right now, I'd say that most people would agree that Baltimore probably has the best or tied for the best farm system in baseball, and mm-hmm. they do a really good job of developing hitters. But Colton Kowser was murdering trip away this year and came yeah. up, and he's hitting like 105 in yep. two weeks in the majors. Yep. Baseball's hard. Yep. And nobody's panicking. Colton Kowser's a good baseball player, but baseball's hard. Mm hmm. It's a hard sport, and you're yeah. going to have downturns. I had somebody the other day on Facebook said something about Brett Beatty just being a boring average player, and they called it. And like, it's Brett Beatty's pay, played seventy games. Yeah, I was like, you would have had a heart attack if you cared about baseball when Mike Trout came up because Mike Trout's yeah first sixty yeah. games in the bigs were awful. He yes. had like two twenty at yep. a thirty five percent K rate, and people were like, oh, this guy's going to be terrible. No, baseball's hard. Yeah. Every level is a tough adjustment. The pitching just gets better. The hitting just gets better. And if you can't adjust, you're going to fall to the wayside. Yep. I agree. I agree with everything you said for a change. Shocker. I wanted you to enjoy that moment. I did. Let's talk about some products coming out. Uh, yep. Up first next week, Tops Chrome. Yeah. Going to be a good product. Corbin Carroll is the big chase. Uh, there has not been that I have seen it. I don't think I would have missed it. Any talk of any super SPs like right. that were supposed to be in last year. I think I think that Fanatics learned their lesson because how they screwed that up mm-hmm. last year. Well, speaking of Fanatics screwing it up, there's rumor going around that no one has yet pulled a Jordan Walker auto out of finest. So there's a chance that that is either a screw up or it's the same thing that happened with Nelson Rada and Bowman. What's crazy Which about... Which we had a listener bring that up. This yeah, week to so us, yeah. The, what's crazy about the Nelson Rada thing in Bowman, if you're not aware of it, um, there has not been a single pack-pulled Nelson Rada chrome auto that is numbered to 150 or less. And the ones that are available on eBay, if you look at the autographs on them, they're obviously not the same person signing as all the ones that are coming out of packs. Now I happen to know a retired MLB agent who not has had, brag. who has had conversations with Rada and Rada's agent. And it has been confirmed that all of the low numbered Chrome stuff was stolen and the autos forged. Now what's crazy about that is that tops has not addressed it at all. Which is real weird. And they're probably not addressing it because Bowman sold a lot and he was on the checklist and they could be in a situation where they got to reimburse a whole lot for it. So they're just going to ignore it, I think, and pretend that it didn't happen. But it definitely happened. And there's a chance that might have happened with the Jordan Walker stuff, too. Uh, We'll see if stuff starts showing up on eBay. And if it does, if the autos match his known autos. How are they going to address that if that's going on? Um... They either address it or they don't. Here's, I think the, the business calculation for them is their cards that are autographed all say tops guaranteed auto. The question for them becomes, what's our exposure worse for? Having to reimburse for each one of those individual autos that yeah. might be called out to us or having to reimburse for cases of product. Mm-hmm. I think they've made the business decision that it'll be cheaper for them to have to reimburse people for bad autos then for bad product All right. that's that's my guess as to what what that situation is uh tops chrome so bowman's actually been pretty readily available at retail do you think we'll be finding the same thing with chrome um i think you'll find the same thing with chrome that you did with bowman the first wave of it will fly off the shelves uh and then it will be available yeah uh i walked into a target today and there was a bowman mega sitting there and i grabbed it uh, so it, it's just uh, a matter of, of that first wave clearing out. Um, I think it will be available, but it's a great rookie class for Chrome. I plan on probably stashing some boxes because you got 
Corbin Carroll, you got Volpe, uh, you got Jordan Walker. Like there's there's a the lot class of classes worth it. Yeah, yeah it, it's worth it to stash and uh, and hang on to it. Uh, sure, so. a fun product to open to. Oh, it is. I mean, don't get me wrong. I will rip some of it too, but uh, yeah. I, now, Topps Chrome is a product that if I'm buying stuff to stash, I'm probably buying hobby, and I'm probably ripping retail. Okay. Why? Right. What'd you say? Why price point? Um, price. Well, price point, and again, this this comes into play for another product that we're going to talk about. The reason I'm ripping retail is because as a show dealer who specializes in loaded up low end boxes, I have a awesome outlet to move the stuff that most people tend to just keep in boxes for years and years and years and never sees the light of day. So for me, I can rip 20 blasters and it's going to be a, a very rare scenario where worst case, I don't at least break even realistically i'm probably going to see a 25 to 30 percent return on that over time at a minimum because even the base rookies the base chrome rookies of the kind of just moderately okay guys are going to sell like spencer steer stuff will sell for two bucks yeah uh so like that's the reason for me now if you're just an everyday average person ripping to hit big cards for your collection you should probably stick with hobby unless you're ripping in bulk if you're gonna buy by the case i feel like tops chrome is the same thing as bowman if you're gonna rip by the case you're probably gonna do okay as far as hitting autos and things like that you're not gonna do much worse than you would in hobby all right so this last week you said something to me that i never thought i'd hear yeah, I, what I never thought I would hear is you talking on the podcast because your mouth is four inches to the side of your mic and you're talking quiet. I think everyone can hear me just fine. Okay. I found a box of hockey cards I've never gone through. <laughs> I know, you're just over here digging <laughs> through stuff. Yeah, that's kind of cool. <laughs> little hollow that's, action? Yeah, that'll, that's a buck or two, right? Yeah, a little Lidstrom. Yeah. Ooh, that's a rookie too. Oh. oh, oh. That might be more than a buck oh, or two. Where'd this sh- box come from, bro? I don't know. <laughs> Should have gone through that before. Oh, there's another one of his rookies. Yeah. All right. All right. Anyway, um, you started talking and not talking crap about non-licensed baseball, which for me, of all the things I never thought you'd open, it'd be non-licensed baseball. Yeah. So what happened was this, what had happened was uh, this week uh, I got the itch to rip some product and I was going to try to find some Bowman and I couldn't find any Bowman. And I'm not hardcore on ripping retail flagship tops, especially Series 2. Uh, so, I found some Donruss blasters. Not blasters, ju- uh, megas. And I looked at them and they guaranteed an auto. And it was 19 cards a pack and six packs a box guaranteed auto and they were like 40 bucks i went huh so i grabbed two of them i took them home and i ripped them and i was like wait a minute as i'm ripping this stuff i'm going through and again this applies the exact same way that's what i just talked about with tops chrome i'm looking through all these each one of those packs has five or six foil cards Uh, almost every pack has at least one numbered card uh, and you're guaranteed an auto. I'm like, well, that's a 50 cent card. That's a dollar card. That's a three dollar card. Yep. That's a dollar card. That's a fit. Every single pack I opened was a minimum of about seven or eight bucks mm-hmm. in reach retail value for me to sell. And there's six of those packs in a box. So minimum, I'm breaking even. Yep. And that's tossing half the cards in the trash. Now. This is not a product to sit on. <laughs> no, not at all. But like, so for example, so they were so good that the next day I went back and bought three more. So I ripped a total of five of them. I hit a numbered Ellie that's like a $50 card. It's a gold unleashed. Hit quite a few numbered Ken Griffey Jr. cards that are all three to five bucks a piece. Hit some really low numbered rated rookie rated prospect stuff. Um, two of my autos were Blaze Jordan, top 50 mm-hmm. prospect in baseball. Yeah. Um, numbered a brooks lee auto that's numbered uh like 75 none of these are huge massive cards two of the boxes had points in them instead of autos but it was a thousand points it's like 60 bucks so at the end of all of it i looked at it and i went i'm gonna 
double mm-hmm. my money on this stuff. And I picked up a number to Ellie. Yeah. Which <laughs> for yeah. me that'd be cool. Like right I'm now. gonna I'm gonna double my money on this stuff. So I mean, and we know what Tops and I don't know if Finash is gonna have a different approach, but Tops is gonna do everything they can to make sure Ellie's on series one next year. Yeah. Um and because it'll so, drive the product. Yeah, now's the time. If you're pulling the number stuff out of non license, you're gonna chase license stuff later. Sell it. Or if it's really cool auto and you want to hang on, that's a great budget way to get in on an LE auto. It, yeah. It's worth chasing at that price well, in my and like, opinion. There's, there's Ichiro autos in the product. Yeah. There's Ken Griffey Jr. autos in the yeah. product. Um, one of the autos I pulled was super cool. It's not a big dollar thing, but you just don't see it. It was a Robin Ventura auto. Yeah. yeah. Like, so let's go down the list on a few other non-licensed here yep. to see your take on them. So Don Russ in this... In this scenario, it seems like a pretty good pull. The uh, price point choice. makes it yeah. very attractive. Yeah. Let's keep that going. Same theme, Prism Baseball. Not at the price point, yeah. especially not hobby. Now, here's the nice thing with Prism Baseball. Retail, are there any guarantees on Megas? Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, but here's what I would tell you if you're going to do Prism Baseball. I would stick with Prism Draft, and I would look for the 2022 stuff that has Jackson Holiday that Walmart has marked down to 17 bucks a blaster. That's a no lose scenario there. So then let's talk like the higher end non licensed stuff. So like you have flawless, you have NT. Um, Wouldn't touch NT with a ten foot pole. Why? So the price point versus what you get doesn't work for me. Okay. If the cards were on card autos, okay, but they're sticker. Mm-hmm. So sticker auto on a product that's going to cost you 400 bucks a box and it's non-licensed, I'd rather go buy Topps Tribute for the Oof, same price point. Which is still kind of brutal at that it, price it point. It is, yeah. but they're both four to 500 bucks yeah. and one's licensed and one isn't. You yeah. get the same number of cards and they're both sticker autos. So we've had a new influx of like newer collectors hopping on to the yeah. show lately. So, big differentiation. Most of you already know this, but just in case you don't, we talk about on-card sticker autos and all that. So, there's certain products where you'll see the the Sharpie has gone directly onto the card. Which means the player has held that card in their hands, which is a big differentiator for a lot of people, a lot of collectors. These sticker autos, they have a big sheet that has a bunch of stickers on it, and they go by and sign... 100 stickers to a sheet. Do you need to steal my thunder for this fun fact? I wasn't. I was just telling them it was 100 stickers a sheet. It's 100 stickers for a sheet, guys. There's 100 of them. If you want to have it, it was 100... (laughs) <laughs> um, anyway, so it's a just a, so the on cards hold more value. They're a yes. little harder to find. There's not a ton of products that do that, and half of that is for expedience. You know, some of these redemptions are because somebody did not want to wait to do hold each card, wait on the shipping and all that. They'd rather and just it sign really a sheet. Took off during COVID. Yep. Uh, there've always there've been sticker autos for a long time, but they were more the exception than the rule. And then when COVID mm-hmm. came around, it just became. All right, so no NT, but flawless for you. Flawless for the price point isn't terrible if you want to rip a high-end product. One, the cards are beautiful. Um, two, there's some really cool stuff you can get. The the Hall of Fame bat knob cards are freaking awesome. You either love them or you hate them. I happen to love them. The Babe Ruth bat knob card is a grail yeah, those cool. piece. Those are cool. um, on card autos. Uh, some cool designs, uh, some decent inserts, and they're all super low numbered. The other non-licensed product that you didn't have on the list there, but that I want to touch on that I think is probably the best value in non-licensed product for really good looking cards is um, Leaf Trinity. Uh huh. You cannot beat the patches. Well, the patches are filthy. They're filthy. The cards look amazing. The autos are nice. They're low numbered. Now, whether it's right or wrong. Yep. An RPA Leaf versus an RPA Flawless or NT. Flawless and NT are going to have a higher resale. Because Leaf's going to be about half. Yeah, it's a perceived value. And However. Which means it's going to be about 20% of yeah. licensed. Yeah. So, But they look amazing. And if you want a cool card for your PC, you can't beat it. And if you ever bully a break. So what I mean by that is if there's a case of a product and you're grabbing like 40% of the team's. That's not a bad one to do it in. No, not at Le- all. The Leaf Trinity stuff, um, and you can get and you the boxes aren't crazy. They're like two forty, yeah, and you get like six cards, five autos. Mm-hmm. Like it's not a bad value for what it is. Yeah. Yep. So I was just surprised to hear you say that. I wanted to make sure that we hit on that. Uh, football is right around the corner. Yeah. 
I was sitting on the couch with my wife watching Quarterback on Netflix, which has been pretty fun. Because you've been watching, telling me to watch it, I just haven't yeah, gotten to it I, yet. I can't believe you haven't. Uh, Mariota, <laughs> uh, Patrick Mahomes, and then who's the third one? Oh, Kirk Cousins. Which curveball there? I Weird knew about dude. him wearing a chain. I did not know he was in a cult. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, he's he's basically a crazy Mennonite. Yeah, not all Mennonites are crazy. He's like a crazy Mennonite. They actually seem really cool, great people. I just wasn't expecting that. <laughs> and it's cool watching like the different person. Like Patrick Mahomes just knows genetically he's a freak. Correct. Uh, Marcus Mariota. So far, where I am in the season is he's really feeling the pressure of this new opportunity in Atlanta. All this. Uh, it's basically hard knocks for quarterbacks. It just follows three of them throughout the season so it's been pretty cool so my wife and i've been getting pumped up for football uh, i had a job where i was working sundays this is, so now with a new job i will be home and we're already talking about it's gonna be a crock pot of chili <laughs> we're watching football all day yeah so can't red wait zone. That. you got yeah. a red zone yeah. it uh aaron Rodgers showed up in new york all business he didn't have any con air costume going on this time uh man would i love that division to have the jets in a just as a troublemaker team. And I think they that's something that's achievable this year. The question, um, oh, good. There's people talking about Super Bowl or bust. New York fans, get over yourselves. Yeah, the question in that situation is very simple. Are you getting a rejuvenated chip on his shoulder, Aaron Rodgers, or are you getting Brett Favre that you got when he got traded to you from yeah. the Packers? I don't think it's quite Brett Favre level, but I agree with you. Like, Did you spend enough time in your – Hiawaska saunas in the off season because two things are true about Aaron Rodgers at the same time. One, he's an all time great quarterback. Yes. Two, he's also an all time weirdo. Yeah. Like that dude is a weirdo. I don't know how else to phrase it. <laughs> it's wanna, just a weirdo. I don't want to say it, but I look back at every episode I've watched, and he's like. I've recently been reading this 800-page book on the ruins in this country. Yeah. Uh, and what that meant for civilizations in the Bronze Age. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yep. He's a weirdo. I watched TikTok for four hours last <laughs> night. <laughs> Relatable content. <laughs> this has been the Ball Card Show, the sports podcast. For the sports collector. See ya. Peace.